The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome to this edition of Insights, everybody. I'm host Marissa McKay, and joining me as promised are the two remaining candidates for Alpena City Council. Joining me first is Steve Gilmore. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hi, Marissa. Thank you for having me. Oh, here. no problem. We're happy to have you. Now, first, tell me, everybody else has mentioned why they're running for City Council. So tell me why you're running and why Alpena is home for you. Well, it's a two-part question. Uh, for me, uh, why I'm running for City Council is... Uh, for a very long time, I've, I've been thinking about running for a political office. Mm -hmm. I mean, since I was very young, I've taken uh, active interest in American politics and politicians. Mm -hmm. And it's been in my mind for quite a long time. And part of the reason why now I, I chose is that I do live within the uh, city limits. And I thought maybe it was time. Plus the fact that uh, my next birthday, I'll be 50 years old. I want to give myself <laughs> a birthday present. So Got it. Very cool. And how did you end up here in Alpena? I ended up in Alpena. Um, my family moved here uh, from Germany. My dad was in the Air Force, but I was originally, I was born in Marquette, Michigan. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was raised here. And if anybody ever asks me, I always tell them that Alpena is my hometown. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. And now moving forward into more of the politics side of this, what are some of the platforms that you have as a candidate for council that you would like to share with, with the viewers? What I've been really thinking about is a little bit more transparency in the process, uh, in the process of how the council operates. Mm -hmm. I do know that the uh, minutes are published within the paper, and your station does a very good job of reporting. Um, the one thing that I've thought about is possibly through your station is, is having a question, like question the councilman mm -hmm. and have them on and you interview them with questions from the community. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that probably would help alleviate some of the possible mystery in uh, any of the uh, the problems that have arisen <clears throat> here lately within the council. Right, okay. And what are some of the other things that you'd like to work on? Maybe some initiatives, some projects that you've seen council in the past, maybe they haven't followed through with something, or maybe it's a project that they are working on that you'd really like to get involved in and continue. Well, the one project that I see that is going to be a boon for the area is the, uh, the open space, the plaza initiative that's going on right now. Um, they're, they're in, in conjunction with Michigan State University. Mm -hmm. They are planning on, at least initially, what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. I, I foresee that actually helping bring in tourists into the area, which in my mind would be uh, helpful. Um, the other thing is, along with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the CVB and Target, mm -hmm. I would like to, to actually, I don't know, help out the small businesses within the city limits, mm -hmm. have them thrive. And, and in conjunction, I think that two-part process would help the city quite a bit. Right. It would give the city an identification along with the branding, and it would just help the city. Right, and now and let's talk about the county a little bit too. Some of the other candidates had mentioned they'd really like to continue working with Alpena County as well as those other entities and the city to really, as a whole, try to help our area. Do you do you think that you'd really like to do something with that as well? I don't think that I don't think that could be avoided. I, mm -hmm. And I don't think and I don't mean that as a negative. Mm -hmm. That has to happen. Right. Uh, the intergovernmental agencies have to get together to for this region to thrive. Mm -hmm. the, the township, the county, and the city have to get together. It's been mentioned about the drone project possibly coming into the CRTC. Right. Um, with that, uh, I think that would be helpful for the city because um, what I found when I was originally canvassing, I was mm -hmm. walking the neighborhoods of the, mm -hmm. of the city, and there were two things that, that I, I saw, and one of them is I think everybody in Alpena owns a dog is one of <laughs> I them. I would agree with that. And the other animals. thing is there's a lot of empty houses in the city. And what I think with the drone project, if that could happen, we could, at the city could, the council could, mm -hmm. offer some kind of a, uh, a tax package 
to help the new families that are coming in right. to go ahead and locate within the city limits of Alpena. I it, believe that right. would be something. To make it more desirable, Commissioner Habermel spoke a lot about that, that that's at, at the county level, that's what they're working towards. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that you bring that up as well. Mm -hmm. And now, what are some of the projects that you see council working on? I know some people have talked about water meters. Some people have talked about the plaza project that you mentioned mm -hmm. as well. What are some things that the council's currently doing that you're really excited about being a part of if you were to be elected? Well, what, what I think right now what, they're, what I would like to do is to be part of the process of healing up the council mm -hmm. after what has transpired with the recall. And that's where I want to be. I, 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 I want to help with that. Mm -hmm. And help look forward and, and not reflect on the past as much, but really just bringing the council and the, the city forward. Oh, absolutely. Just mm -hmm. that forward vision mm -hmm. and, and to move forward and, and ensure the vitality of the city of Alpena and, the, and this region of Northeast Michigan. All right, Steve. So what are some things that you'd like to say to the voters as to why they should vote for you over some of the other candidates? Well, I, I feel that what I, I can bring to the council is... And, I don't mean this as a negative, but I, I am the quintessential outsider to this process. And one of the reasons why I have uh, thrown in my hat for city council is that I, I really am not beholden to any political party or group within the city. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I do bring a fresh look. Um, and a neutral look as and well. And a neutral. Um, I do think the other candidates are, are eminently qualified also. I don't want to say anything negative about them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the whole thing about it was I was overjoyed that there were 15 people that were interested in city council. And, right, that showed a lot of initiative. And for community. me, that just shows the vitality of, of, of the civic responsibility that the citizens of the city have, so. Yeah, it should certainly be a good race, definitely, as you mentioned, there are a lot yeah. of qualified people running. Yes. and. Again, I, it just is something that Mayor Walagora said at that night that I gave my presentation. It's going to be the most difficult part-time job that anybody's ever going to have. And I'm, I really would like to give that a shot. Okay, wonderful. And how can voters, if anybody has a question after seeing this segment, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can call me at uh, my cell phone, which is 916 seven seven three one and I would be glad to answer any questions. All right well thanks so much C for being here today and for sharing your thoughts on everything. We really appreciate it. If you guys would like to stay tuned we'll hear from the final candidate running for council Mike Pollock. Welcome back everybody to this edition of Insights. Joining me now is the fifth and final candidate for City Council, Mike Pollock. Hi Mike, how are you? Great, thanks for having me here. Oh, no problem. So first of all, I wanna know, why are you running for Alpena City Council? It's my way to give back to the community. I'm very passionate about Alpena. Um, I just love it here. And um, I, I'm the only candidate that's running that's um, born and raised here and never left Alpena. My family's here, I love it here. I'm passionate about Alpena. And I believe my final resting place is gonna be here. <laughs> um, I also serve two terms on the city council, two four year terms. And um, the reason I stepped down was uh, scheduling conflicts between, towards the end between work and mm -hmm. the city council. And I always said I was gonna get back into the city council after mm -hmm. I retire. And now this opportunity arose and it's perfect timing for me and to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And um, I truly love it here and it's my way to say thanks to Alpena for all that's done for me. All right, well that's certainly a great reason. And so what are some of the platforms that you really have as a candidate that you'd like to share with our viewers today? Well, to be a voice of the people. And I think what gives me, I think there's three things that drive Alpena. Uh, big business that employs all the people, mm -hmm. your common laborers and the people of Alpena and small business. I've been fortunate enough for 27 years, I got to drive for UPS and I delivered to all those places. I heard from big business what they want to make a better of Alpena. I talked to the common laborers and the people delivering to their homes and mm -hmm. that, uh, what they wanted for 27 years and what they felt would make a good thing. And I don't think there's a business in Alpena I haven't, <laughs> small business that I haven't delivered to and talked to the owners and got to hear what they want for a better Alpena. And I think that gives me, you know, a big advantage. Mm -hmm. And I've been appointed now to the, uh, back onto the city council to the election. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I'd done um, Target and the Chamber of Commerce meet and I got on that board and along with uh, Target and the Chamber and a City Council member, there's a County Commissioner, mm -hmm. a President of one of the banks, 
um, several of the managers of the big companies in town, uh, uh, some of the small business owners. So you really and, have a whole bunch of people then yes, from all these different Yes, very avenues. diverse mm -hmm. group, and we're working on how to keep what we have here and also what we can do to bring in, and this is a very exciting group, mm -hmm. what we can do to bring into the community, not just citywide, but globally, um, what we have, we're a gem here, and what we have to offer, and it's very exciting to, to do that. And also, uh, two weeks ago, I was on an intergovernmental meeting where the township supervisors, county commissioners, it's open to people, too, mm -hmm. to voice their concerns, and we do uh, basically almost the same thing, working at these goals together to bring things in. And um, I also believe that we have to keep our services that we have our police, our fire, we're, we're second to none. Mm -hmm. People want this. Uh, we had a snowstorm today. The DPW workers, they were out there snow plowing the streets. People could get work, go home, run your errands. Right. What a great, great bunch of workers. And we're second to none. And people also want sewer and water. Uh, we have some of the most inexpensive rates in the state of Michigan. And we also have received multiple, multiple awards for the purest water, not only in Michigan, but in the nation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things that I implemented way back when I was on city council has helped drive and keep these services that there are. And that is very important. People don't say, well, it snowed out, get plow my street in three days, or, you know, right. uh, someone's breaking into my house, whenever you can get a police officer here. They want top services, and this is very, very important for Alpena, I believe. Right, and like you mentioned too, some of the things that you were able to work on in your previous terms as council, I'm hearing that you just want to be on it again, not only as a voice for the people, but to continue some of those projects. Yes, yes, and it's very exciting. And, and you know, the work with Target and that, it, that's just really, really exciting. And to work with the other people in town and getting involved and being able to work with your township uh, supervisors and county mm -hmm. commissioners is very important. And I do have a track record that I can do that. All right, well, great, yeah, exactly. All the other candidates have talked as well about keeping those ways of communication open to, as everybody's goal is to help, just help Alpena. So what are some of the things that you'd like to do in terms of projects? I know you mentioned a few, but if you'd like to go over some of the things that council's currently doing that you just really want to continue. First thing we have to do, we need a city manager. Um, uh, we're starting um, interviews and stuff for that. It's gonna be almost a year we haven't had a city manager. And uh, Greg Sundin stepped up to the plates, done a great, great job. But we got to hire somebody that knows numbers, figures, knows how to negotiate products or um, uh, contracts. Mm -hmm. And we're a family, not just the city council and that, the whole city of Alpena. The people speak to us as council members, tell us what we want. We direct that to the city manager who works with the staff. We have to listen and work and communicate and we need a city manager that's going to follow what direction we want to take Alpena and this is very important and we have to hire somebody that has all these qualifications that is a, a leader mm -hmm. and can work with staff that's very important and another thing that's coming is this drone system on mm -hmm. the air base this is very very important and this is going to create jobs. This is going to create jobs that are starting at a hundred plus thousand dollars wow. and down. And if this comes in, it's going to spur off other jobs. I guarantee you. Right. And at the same level. And also, we got to get what our state representatives, we the county commissioners, the city council, and that, and tell the state representative to get hold of our governor that this is important to Michigan, but it's in really important Alpena. We need this. I guarantee you if this comes into Alpena, that these empty houses that you see sitting around are gonna be sold, our property values are gonna go up. It's, it's no big secret that our, um, our income coming in is gone down mm -hmm. versus our spending. And this right. is gonna put into the budget and keep our services that we had, like I spoke earlier about mm -hmm. the police and the fire department. This project, this drone project is so important and it's good to, I personally working with Target and mm -hmm. the chamber and it's, uh, council and uh, the, the county commissioners mm -hmm. and stuff. And this is very, very important. And I, I guarantee you if this comes in, this is uh, this plus plus. And another thing, I kind of like the project um, that they're working on on Chisholm and Second, the Plaza project. Yeah. That is just be the final touches on the painting, you know, uh, a masterpiece. Uh, we have to get with the merchants down there to see, is this a, a good fit? Is this where you want it? 
Do you want it um, someplace else in town? Will, will the loss of parking affect your business? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things there, and and what they think of it, it's uh, the people down there is what it's going to impact the most. Right. And I hear too a lot of the things that you're saying is just really being an open communicator with all these different entities, and that seems yep. like something that's very important to you yes, as a candidate. Is. And now, final for my final question, Mike, what are some of the qualities and things that you have that make you stand out from the other people, and why you think people just need to keep you on council? Uh, first thing, I would like to say we have four candidates running, and I think any one of the four would do a fabulous job. Well, there's five, but, you know, yes. not counting myself. Yes. But I think what pushes me over the top is I bring experience. Eight years elected on the city council, two terms, and um, uh, I know and I, people have a track record of my voting, mm -hmm. how I vote, what I stand for. And I also get to every council meeting a half an hour to 45 minutes early so that if anybody has any questions uh, on anything that they can, on, on the agenda, non-agenda, mm -hmm. that I'm very approachable, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that my phone number's in the book. I've got a lot of calls when I used to be on the council. And um, I will get you an answer to your question or find out. And I'm very approachable. And I think these are very good qualifications. And now that I'm retired from UPS, I can dedicate more quality time to this. And I'm very passionate, like I said. Right. And I could be a good voice. And um, the three realms that bring us together. Mm -hmm. um, I am um, also the only candidate running that's a small business owner. So you yeah. feel like you have all these different experiences that really yes. sort of put put you as a, a, a good candidate. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I know what the big business wanted. Mm -hmm. My father and my mother worked in the factories. Um, I'm a common labor. I'm a retired teamster, so mm -hmm. I know what it's like as a common labor, and I know right. what the small business people want because I know what it's like to pay the taxes and pay your help and um, to try to keep your business afloat. So all right. I, I have experience and all that. So why do you think people, or how, excuse me, how do you think people can get in touch with you if they have any questions about your uh, My number's in the book, 356-6244. All right. And uh, if I ain't there, leave me a message and I'll get back with you. <laughs> and now for our final segment of this edition of Insights, we'll hear from the current city council and get some of their thoughts on what's important when electing candidates for this election. Welcome back to Insights, everybody. Joining me now is, are the mayor and the two current council people to tell us what they're looking for in a city council candidate. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for joining us. No problem. So, nice to okay. So, tell me, what are some of the things that you're looking for in a city council candidate? I know you know there's going to be two new people. The dynamic's going to change a little bit. But what do you think is really important that these people bring to the table? Um, well, it's pretty tough to to be honest with you, just because of the fact that you get we have such a short period of time right. um, to to make a selection, and it's a three year. It's the rest of the the terms that were left mm -hmm. vacant, so it's three years. Um, so I try not to be too too focused on what we what needs to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. um, immediate things are going to be uh, our current budget for next year, for CIP, um, and a selection and and um, appointment of a new city manager. So. Um, you know, those are very short term, but I try not to focus just on those immediate things because mm -hmm. it's a three year term. Uh, so try to look more long term, look into the future. Try to a look a little bit, bit more long term. Uh, you know, just being there now for, for a year um, I, and to focus on long term. And you look at, um, uh, you look at uh, Sam Eiler, has, uh, he's made it known that he's not going to. Um, Run again. Uh, run again for mm -hmm. his current seat. So in November, you're going to have another seat that's going to be left open. And so uh, so the whole dynamics of council will will have been and will continue to change mm -hmm. um, within a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, so so it's a little tough. Right. It's kind of tough. Um, so it's kind of all encompassing for me. We've got really great candidates. That's the um, that's the positive thing about it. Uh, and we've got some forums coming up where mm -hmm. they'll be able to see the uh, Chamber of Commerce has uh, some questionnaire uh, questionnaire that they had answered mm -hmm. uh, on their website. I'm sure the, the newspaper will probably do a questionnaire and you have this show. So uh, we'll have an opportunity to take a look at all of them. So. Right, and the public will get the chance to kind of know who, they're, who they would be voting in. Who they'll be voting, sure. So, and like I said, it, um, important for people to understand that it is a three year term. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly, and so some of those long-term qualities, obviously, it's teamwork, communication, just kind of the basic things that the really would be things. important. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and you and you do get a good, a pretty, you'll get a pretty good look at you know the candidates to be able to do that selection, you know, knowing exactly what they're, uh, how they'll be able to perform, and what they're, you know. Um, uh, 
what they're going to be able to do on council. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do in any election process, right. to be honest with you. It's a little tough to get to get that until someone's sitting in the seat and then you get to take a look. So, right. Um, but I think they're all completely capable of uh, of making a good effect on the on the community. So. Now we'll hear from Councilman Sean Sexton. All right, so tell me, what are some of the qualities that you're looking for in these new council people? Well, I think we look for three or four things. And, and first of all, that there are people that are willing to represent Alpena above all else. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is that it's, it's not political, it's not special interest, that in each decision that they make, they really look at, well, what's the best for the whole of Alpena and not mm -hmm. a political affiliation or a, a special right. interest group. Uh, secondly, I think, that we really need people that are honest and transparent, and I think that speaks for itself pretty much. Mm -hmm. I think people are not afraid to be themselves up there and, and just be straightforward and, and kind of let it all hang out, so to speak. I think the third thing that, that I would like is people that bring ideas to the table. Um, <clears throat> you know, often we, we kind of are looked at as a decision-making body, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's well and good, but I'd like to see more innovation and, and bring your well-researched, well-thought-out ideas to the table, and, and the worst thing we can do is, is vote against it. Um, and then who knows, maybe that'll spur another group to pick that idea up. And I think lastly, we really look at um, you know, people that are there not to, to play the game. Um, you, know, you expect on the federal level and the state level that there's going to be politics right. involved and that people are going to play those games. And um, I really think on a local level, it shouldn't be like that. And mm -hmm. It should just be you know, good people, regardless uh, of where they're coming from, that are there to try to do good for their community. Um, and I think if we're all like-minded in that regard, then whatever differences we have you know, are, are going to be fairly minor. Right. Uh, I know I said lastly, but <laughs> uh, yeah, probably, probably the, the one other thing because of the special election and the timing of it, um, you know, we really are looking for people that have been paying attention, that you know, have been involved in the community, mm -hmm. that have been active, and uh, they're going to be able to, to kind of assimilate a little bit quicker. Right, and somebody who's not coming in a little bit more fresh-faced doesn't really know too much about what's going on. Right. And finally, we'll hear from Councilman Sam Eiler. Okay, Sam, so what are some of the qualities that you think are really necessary that these two new council people will bring to the table? Well, I think um, the ability to listen is very important, and it's very important in any kind of a, of a situation. But we work for the people who you know, live in Alpena and pay the taxes, and we represent them. We, we represent the people who didn't vote for us, as well as the people who voted for us. Mm -hmm. We don't um, represent only Republicans or only Democrats. That's why it's a nonpartisan election. So the ability to listen, the ability to be open-minded, the ability to go into a study session thinking one way and coming out with an open mind. I think that ability is missing in Washington for, to, to a great extent and to Lansing to a great extent. But uh, we've always been able to get together around the council table in my, in my years on council. So the ability to be open minded, the ability to listen, and uh, the ability to do what you think is right. I've agonized over votes that I've lost. I've agonized over votes that I've won. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if, if, if you can feel good about what you've done to prepare yourself to go into a meeting, I think um, those are the qualities I, I look for. And I think in the pool that people have to vote for, in the absence of any of the other ones, mm -hmm. all of them could do a good job on, on city council. I truly believe that. Well, that's good, and I think too what's inspiring is that so many people came out, not ju um, not oh, even just yeah. for this election, but just for those temporary seats as well. Yeah. It was shocking to us to see 15 applicants, you know, when, when an elections roll around, you, you barely have one more than the number of open seats sometimes, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it was really good to see, and, and a lot of good candidates had to be winnowed out, unfortunately, and, and we right. have a good, a good pool to pick from this time. Well, good, and I think another thing that's important, too, that some other people have mentioned is that it's not just a short-term fix as well. I mean, the temporary seats were, but this is for a three-year right. contract, if you will. It's almost a full term, and, mm -hmm. and when you think about it, we've got this election in, in late February to pick two people, and then there's another election coming up in November to pick Two, two different seats, mm -hmm. so the voters of uh, Alpena will elect 80% of the city council in about nine months. Uh, and we've got a lot on our plate coming up. We've got to select a new city manager. Mm -hmm. um, I hope we can do it this year. I, I have nightmares that it might go <laughs> on and on and on, depending on the pool we get. Right. But th there's a lot to do, and, and 
Um, so and people coming here to work is also important too. Somebody right, moving willing. family here and that sort of thing. And I, I hope the voters will do a lot to educate themselves because there there are candidate nights. You'll do features of the can mm -hmm. about the candidates. The newspaper will do features about the candidate. Inform yourself on who might represent you the best, and then cast a, an open-minded and confident vote. Thank you for tuning in for this edition of Insights, everybody. For more information or for anything else that you may need, you can visit WBKB11.com and watch some of these candidate specials to help educate yourself before this February election. We'll see you next week. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation, all rights reserved.